Hello, it's Karen Berniston, and today I have a technique video, really simple technique for making an easel card and using the creepy hands die as the easel stopper. This is a super simple little card, goes together really quickly, and you'll just need a couple of dies to make it. You can check out all of my die designs at karenberniston.com. This is my project for the October 2017 Designer Challenge with a theme of Halloween cards. So to make my easel card, I'm going to start with a top fold A2 size card cut out of black cardstock. So that's four and a quarter by 11 inches folded in the middle at five and a half. Then I just took a scrap of cardstock and cut the height to two and three quarters, just so I could find the middle of each panel of the card. So I'm just gonna line that up with the bottom of my card. That shows me where the center of that is. And what I wanna do is I want to add a little scrap of green cardstock right in the middle of the card. How big? Just big enough that it will cover the creepy hands from the Halloween Elements die set. So what I want to do is add an adhesive all over the back of that little scrap of green cardstock. And you can see that I'm putting the adhesive everywhere. Now I'm using glue, but you could just as easily use a tape runner or tape. It doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that you've got it good and shellacked. And I basically just want to glue that to the black cardstock in the approximate center of my inside panel. My pattern paper panels are cut to four inches wide by five and a quarter. And for the one inside the card, I just want to make sure that I only use my adhesive around the outside so that I don't have any adhesive over the top of that green piece of cardstock because in that area I'm going to remove the paper later. And for the front piece, I actually don't want any adhesive yet. I just want to temporarily put it in place on the front of the card. And I'll just use some removable tape near the bottom and get that attached temporarily to the front of the card. Once again, I'll use my little scrap that tells me where the center of the card is because that will allow me to put my big Catherine label die so that it lines up centered over that center of the card. So that little cheater is just a really easy way not to have to get a ruler out. And once again, I'm gonna use my temporary removable tape to put that label in place on the front of the card. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. I'm gonna use a Sizzix Big Shot. And the trick here when doing this cut with a large label is that you want your top cutting pad only to come up to the center of that label. And notice that where the pad is is that it's covering the top half of the label and the back part of the card so that after I roll it through, I've only cut half the label through both layers. See, you can see that on the black side. Okay, now what I wanna do is I want to leave the die in place, but carefully remove the pattern paper because I would actually like the entire label to be cut out of the pattern paper. So I did the first step with them put together so that I would make sure they will line up perfectly once I've die cut the label. Then I go back through with just the paper, finish out the die cutting, and now I have a piece of pattern paper to fit on the front of the card that will perfectly go around that little half cut that's in the cardstock. And then it's just a matter of using any type of adhesive tape runner or glue to adhere that pattern paper then to the front of the card, making sure that everything lines up. And then I'm just gonna use a little ball stylus to score the card just right outside of the label on both sides, just starting at the little center line. And then the whole card will bend there at the center of the label and that's what creates that easel. Back inside the cardigan, I can use that little cheat sheet I have to find the center. I know that that's where my green cardstock is hidden underneath there, and that's what I want to cut my creepy hands through. So I'm gonna use my temporary tape to hold that in place. I've got my card open, because of course I only wanna cut through one side of the card. And then I'm gonna roll that through my machine and then back through. And even then I know that I'm not gonna be able to cut in one pass through three layers of paper and cardstock. So what this first pass will do is it'll get me through the pattern paper. And remember that there is no adhesive behind that pattern paper in the center, so it's really easy to lift up those creepy hands and remove them. Now the die specifically does not cut the bottom edge. That's what's a cool thing about that particular die because you always get the option as to whether or not you use them as a hinge like we're gonna do here today or whether you extend them or whether you cut them off. So very versatile. 
and then very easy to seat that die right back into position again and roll it through the machine a couple of times. You, If you have to, you might flip it over and roll it through with the black side up. Just leave the die where it is, but just flip the whole thing over and roll it through a couple times if you need to so that you can get that die to cut down through both those layers, both the green cardstock and the black. And then you'll be able to lift up those little green hands and those will be the easel stop for the card. And if you find that your card isn't wanting to stand down, you know, in other words, it's not making that nice, perfect, crisp little tent, just make sure that you take a bone folder or something along the center fold to really make that a nice, crisp fold. And then you'll see the difference. Now it will actually, instead of floating up, it'll actually just set down there right behind those hands. Okay, let me make my decorations. I'm gonna go back to my Halloween Elements die set and grab the pumpkin pieces. So there's a solid pumpkin. I need that one out of black but I also need the portion behind the stem out of green. So I'll just go ahead and use two scraps underneath that die and cut both green and black at the same time. It's nice to have that solid pumpkin die in the set because sometimes you just may wanna make some harvest cards or some solid pumpkins that don't have faces. And so you always have that option by using just the outer die. But then when you do wanna make a jack-o'-lantern, then you just nest in the face piece at the same time. Now that can center perfectly, or you can make choices. If you wanna tilt it a little bit or slide it to one side, like I'm gonna to do today, it kinda of does make just a little bit of a different looking pumpkin by having it being not perfectly centered in the die. If you'd like the stem of the pumpkin to be green, you can do that just with a marker or what I do usually is just cut another pumpkin. I wouldn't have even had to cut the entire pumpkin. I really just would have had to have a tiny little scrap of green behind the stem area and then just go in and glue that on top of the orange one. Now I can just glue that overlay to the black pumpkin. And one thing that I think is kind of a cool look is that if you'd like to have a lot of shine to the face, you can use the Nouveau Crystal Drops. I'm gonna use those in a black and just add that to the black pumpkin in the center of the pumpkin, basically everywhere where the face is. So you just kind of look at your overlay and look at where the face is going to be over the top of that area. And then you just cover that with the black Nouveau Drops, which will act like a glue, but I do think it's a good idea to add a little bit of drop of glue around that as well, just to make sure that you get a good adherence even after those crystal drops dry. So once those dry, it'll give a nice shiny face to the jack-o'-lantern, and it's actually much easier to do it this way, trust me, than it is to go in with the crystal drops and try to keep them within those little areas like if you were to add them afterwards. Now, I thought it would be fun to have my jack-o'-lantern basically be flying as though it were a ghost with a pumpkin head. So I'm going to take the ghost from the set, and I just die cut that out of white cardstock, and then I'm just going to add some glue into the head area and replace it with the pumpkin. Okay, I have stamped some spider webs and some gray ink onto some orange cardstock, and I'm going to die cut the middle label out of the Catherine label set. So this is the label that's the center size. It's got all the little pierce marks on the outside. And that's actually gonna be the background now for my black label. Now the black cardstock, I went ahead and added some double-sided adhesive tape to the back of the black cardstock. And then I'm going to nest in the boo into that same size label die. So the label die comes from the Catherine label set and then the boo comes from the Halloween elements. And I'm gonna nest those together, kind of slide the boo to the right because I'm gonna put the little pumpkin ghost on the left-hand side. And then I'm gonna just die cut that piece. So then I could just carefully remove my two dies. And now what I would like to do is I would like to remove the liner from the entire piece. So what I'm trying to have happen is I'm trying to make a very large sticky black label and not have any part of the boo greeting fall out. So I need to go real slowly for this, but I was successful. And now what I wanna do is I wanna put that over the top of the orange one, but I'm not gonna put any pressure yet where the boo is. So I just wanna get the outsides kinda of lined up, and then I just need to find some sort of tool where I can pick out the word boo, but leave in all the inside parts. So if I press those down first, the centers of the B, the centers of the O's, then I can carefully lift up and out the word boo. I could even use that on another project if I wanted to, and then just go ahead and give everything a good press. And you'll see that basically the spider webs and the orange is gonna shine through the letters. Okay, I glued my pumpkin ghost to the boo label and then now I'm gonna glue my boo label onto the card, just centering it into the black label that's on the card itself. 
making sure I don't have any adhesive behind the pumpkin head because of course he's going to fly up in the air as the card is opened. I just added some distress inks to a strip of white cardstock and then stamped the Happy Halloween. That's a Tim Holtz stamp. And then I'll just glue that now right to the inside of my card. So really just a cute, simple little easel card for Halloween. I mean, I see this card as being translatable for really any type of pattern paper. I see this as a card that would be easy for a kid to make if you wanted to make it into a little Halloween project with your kids or grandkids. You can decorate the envelopes if you want. You do end up with one set of extra creepy hands from when you die cut. So then I just added some monster sleeves and some distress inks and then decorated up the envelope. That's just a standard A2 envelope. This card is perfectly flat. It'll mail for a single stamp. And do make sure that you head over to the blog post if you're not there already, and you'll find links to all of the great Halloween cards by the team this month. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com, where you can find out information about purchasing these dies, as well as links to all of my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.